beautiful friends, it's me Stormy Grace and it is time to talk about this upcoming full moon in Leo, February 8th or 9th, just depending on where you live in the world. And you guys, this is such a beautiful, beautiful full moon. Now, if you haven't had the opportunity to watch your February monthly horoscope, please make sure that you check that out so you can kind of see the backdrop that the setting of this is coming on for you. As well, during that monthly video, I talk about an aspect that I think is so beautiful with this moon to be helpful, and that is that Jupiter and Neptune are going to, on the 20th of February, come into this absolutely divine sextile with each other. Now, yes, that's not until the 20th, and we're going to talk about this moon happening on the 9th, but what I want you to understand about that particular aspect this month is that because this moon gives us the opportunity to have so much courage and to find our own feet and our own voice that we add to the collective body, that aspect on the 20th, you need to have it. You need to kind of know where you're going and why you're finding your feet, why you're finding your voice. Now, Jupiter and Neptune coming together in the sextile that they will be coming in is this beautiful energy where you get to do two things. One, it says with Jupiter in Capricorn, that is a very material energy, right? It's very much so in the material world. Neptune is in Pisces, which is a place that walks in between the worlds. So between the two of them, when the planets have sex, that's good for us because they meld and create an opportunity that we can intelligently take action on. So as we go towards that particular aspect, your opportunity to identify and define your ideals. What's right for you? Where does your voice belong? What does this area of your life look like, right? Well, you're gonna need a moon many weeks before that to get enough courage to move towards that, right? But you can start setting it now. So it'll help you bring something that's maybe intangible or feels like it's been a piece of you or has, has just been in this place you couldn't fully identify into a very material realm and expand it. It's this opportunity to know that you can really make your dreams come true, but you need a nice big moon at the beginning of the month to help get that started, okay? So just know that in February, that's one of the places I'm excited for us to land and see what we create is the 20th with that Jupiter-Neptune sextile because if you've got your voice on, if you're starting to identify some places you can cut ties and have your own kind of pinache going on, you can move those things a little bit more easily into your reality and you'll have your ideals of what it looks like and needs to look like for you to be happy and for the collective to be happy because you're owning your part. That's where we lead in with this gorgeous full moon happening at 20 degrees of Leo here on our board. Now, when we're having a full moon, the actual aspect that is happening when we're having a full moon is that the sun and the moon are in opposition. So these guys are directly opposite each other, okay? And if you're looking up at the board following your glyphs, they're listed just here, okay? So the sun and the moon are in opposition to each other. They're pulling in two different directions, right? So the full moon tells us that our polarities are going to lit up. My needs versus my wants, my what I want to do versus my obligations, right? Me versus the collective is basically what we're talking about at this particular moon. We've got the sun up here shining in gorgeous Aquarius, and that is very humanitarian. And it's the group. It's all of us. We're doing this thing together. It's our future going forward, but it's an everybody kind of energy, right? The sun is here. It's shining. We're motivated to be a part of the whole, to add to the whole, to learn from the whole, right? But the moon down here in Leo, Leo is an energy of me, my heart, my creativity, my self-expression, my passion, right? My play, my joy, right? So this is a very 
not about the whole kind of energy. This is so incredibly personal to each and every single one of us, right? So at the full moon, the full moon light is so big, it illuminates things that have maybe even been right in front of us that we couldn't see, but it says we need to end something, bring something to an ending. We need to make an adjustment so that we can kick this thing, kick ourselves on course to continue to move forward as intensely and passionately as we can, or we need to acknowledge something that is standing in our way or something that we can use to get out of our way. So we need to end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment. That is what's happening. Now, because it is a full moon and the moon also governs our emotional lives, even though it's in this bright, delicious, sunny energy of Leo, which is joyful, bold, expressive, generous, this is still our emotional lives. I don't know about you guys, but when I am in my full power or when I am attempting to be in my full power and really express my own uniqueness, that's a highly emotional place sometimes. And as we are at this particular moon, many of us are stepping out there in a very shine your heart forward kind of way for the first time. Even if it's the same old situations, we are stepping into them much differently. So this is still going to govern at quite an emotional level for many of us and so you may feel a little bit emotional you may be sensitive um, for some of us because we also have a fair amount of energies happening between Pisces and Aries some of us may be feeling very very intuitive and strong and ready to move so however it hits you just know it is sending light over some vulnerable energy that we can definitely make great use of okay all right, let's talk about these aspects we've got going this month with this moon. And I'm gonna show you a couple aspects in this particular video this time that also include the asteroids, okay? All right, so our first and I think most critical and important uh, aspect that we've got going on is that our full moon here is going to sit in a trine, okay? to Mars in Sagittarius. Now this is nice because Mars over here in Sagittarius is expansive, right? So he wants to expand. Mars is about action and movement and energy and it's boots on the ground kind of movement. It's not just I have all of this abundance of energy happening. It can be if you stand still and you don't use it. But Mars wants to have his feet on the ground and he wants to be moving. He's courageous. Sagittarius is expansive. It's generous. It's optimistic. It is so bright, right? So when we have a trine going, a trine is a nice pocket of opportunity. It's ease. It brings some ease to this moon where you have been awakened to the question of, who are you? What is your self-expression? What is your unique something that you are bringing to the table that actually by owning your own thing, by expressing exactly who you are and what you've got or bringing joy into your world, that is how you bring joy. Not about how everybody, not about how everybody, about how you do this deal by owning you, by learning you, by being brave enough to be in motion and take on what you need to take on for yourself, this is how you give back to the everybody, right? But you gotta figure out what that is. So Mars brings a fair amount of courage to the table here. Not to mention, Mars is here in a fellow fire sign, right? Our moon is happening down here in the energy of Leo, right? But then we get another fire sign involved in the mix and it's like, yes, let's do this. Let's go after it. I am feeling intuitive, right? Because logic is not the stuff dreams are made of when Mercury is in the energy of Pisces. What we have to do is we have to trust our intuition. We have to trust this place that we can feel that maybe we can't see. And we put this all together and take that courageously into a path and a pattern of motion at this time. Now, Mars is still Mars and a full moon is still a full moon. Mars can be aggressive. He is not afraid to have a fight, right? In the energy of um, Sagittarius, this could be a fight. You could be fighting with your faith 
Do you have enough faith to express yourself, to take your vision, to take your dream, to take you out in the world? You may be fighting with faith. If your feet aren't moving, just know you're likely fighting with faith, right? This could actually be a faith issue out in the world that you're stepping up and speaking about and you're speaking into it, right? I'm going to show you another aspect that's important to that. But on the other side, this is an energy that could bring a legal situation to your table and you're quite emotional about it. But the fact is, you will be in motion, okay? The last thing I want to say about this is just because Mars can be Mars and just because a full moon can be so emotional, go out, my friends. Find your joy. Find your boldness. Find your generosity. Find your expression. But don't let it make you mean Right? I think that rigorous honesty out in our world is so important. It means we tell the truth no matter what the cost is, right? We have integrity. We've got a fair amount of energies in Capricorn. Integrity is a word for the year, but brutal honesty, the kind where we're saying it just to be mean. We're saying it because a piece of me is hurting, so I want you to feel the same. That, there is an ease of that to happen at this moon as well. So, Practice the integrity around this that is your joy, that is your brilliance without being in the version of being unkind, okay? And if something unkind does happen, what I'm going to tell you is own it. This moon is also in quincunx aspect. Let's make that aspect. Also in quincunx aspect to um, Neptune. So you could see yourself being a little bit more sensitive and so a little bit more easily triggered. But instead, you can also take that to a place where if in relationships you've needed to speak up, if in your workplaces, if in your daily life, if in your expression of physical joy in your body, you've needed to move. This is a wonderful place to find that that expression happening here. Okay. Now, the other thing I do want us to keep an eye on is we are having this full moon, and that's great, but it is still set to the tune of a very Cancerian year, right? So we do our Cancerian, Capricornian year, which, yeah, it gets some Cancer influence, but very Capricornian year. So there is some structure. There is some power. There is some authority. There is some smart practical use of your resources, of the mentors and authority figures that are around you that you do need to make use of. You just need to be wise about it. And you may not know at this particular moon exactly where that balance is at and how to find that. And that is okay. Aim your attention at this moon right here for your voice, your joy, your play, your self-expression. The balance will come as we continue on and probably as we start to tap into the new moon at the end of the month. Now, the other thing that we've got going for us is we have got this beautiful energy happening here, this moon, in a very nice, let me make it this way, in a very nice sextile with Juno. Now, if you don't know anything about Juno, I'm going to talk about that for just a second. So Juno was the wife of Jupiter, right? So Juno is an asteroid. She is over commitment. It's very serious commitment, right? Like Venus brings love into our lives, but Juno brings a level of commitment, right? It's, it's soulmate kind of energy. Juno is over here, not only retrograde, so she's flipping backwards, looking at whatever she's looking at, and what she's looking at are things in Libra, so relationships, okay? Because <clears throat> the other things that Juno deals with are issues of infidelity, issues of where we, we are in denial about something in our relationships, where we... Um, we feel like we're less than or we feel like we are powerless here or we feel like we're not quite able to commit. So one of the things I think of with this moon being in the me energy, taking on another we energy, right? Because we've got Aquarian we energy. This is the big hole. This is a one-on-one -on -one relationship kind of hole. So whether it's the relationship of you with you relationships because Juno is in retrograde with um, people in your past who were significant in your life, maybe teachers, parents, lovers, whatever it is, um, you are taking this on. And in this sextile, you have quite a bit of ease to be able to do that. You're saying, I need to find my own voice and break out of where I felt less than, where I felt like I've been powerless, where I felt like my parents taught me this, but this is really what my heart is feeling called to um, in relationship as well. 
because Juno is such a powerful commitment energy, sometimes we have these relationships in our lives and the people in our lives have been telling us, oh yeah, you know what, you are... You are great at doing hair, but I mean, I don't think you should quit your full-time job to do it. But what's happening for you on the inside is you're like, I really don't want to be an accountant. I, I want to do hair. I want to study. I want to learn. I want to go after this. Or you've had people saying, you know, whatever it is that has collapsed your joy and in a state of denial or a state of, yeah, maybe other people are right. We've given it up, right? So there's an adjustment and it's coming with ease. Remember, a sextile is a pocket of opportunity, but then we intelligently take action on it. So you are outgrowing past beliefs from significant relationships even if you have been the relationship telling yourself that you couldn't do something who am I to do this everybody else is already doing it who am I to be an astrologer everybody's already talking about astrology who am I to whatever and this energy helps you get out of your way then you've got fellow fire energy of Mars saying you're right let's go let's do stuff let's move let's make this happen. Let's take action on this thing we're intuitively feeling called to and we've likely been feeling intuitively called to it for quite some time, right? It's a very um, enlightened kind of energy and especially with Mercury and Pisces, I feel like our intuition is just so beautifully and nicely fired at this particular time. So there is a lot, there is a lot happening at this moon not to mention oh let's talk about this i don't want to leave these guys out okay if you can see over here in this aries energy right here we've got venus who's in Air who's in aries and venus in aries can be quite impulsive right she can just be very impulsive and sometimes you guys we've got to have a little impulsiveness to get us jumping to get us out there right aries is a cardinal energy this is an energy of starting so here you're starting your new relationships you're starting your love you're starting your money in the first house you're starting to magnetically put your new identity out there that comes from here. Who are you? What do you want? What do you feel called to? Because then you'll more likely use that energy to help put yourself out there. Not only that, Venus here is in conjunction with not only Black Moon Lilith, but also Chiron. Okay, and everybody is forward. No one's retrograde over here. So in the energy of Aries, finding your voice, finding your joy, detaching from some relationships from the past, remembering that there does need to be some structure. There does need to be some use of resources if you're going to use that Jupiter-Neptune sextile to make your dreams come true in a material place. There has to be some of these things. But in taking the courage of this Mars-Leo trying under your belt, getting your butt in motion, moving your feet, making that phone call, making that video, saying, I don't want to go to that thing, right? Whatever it is here, you have the opportunity by releasing and stepping forward to heal things in yourself, to heal wounds, to heal old beliefs, to heal this place in, in the Aries energy of our identities where we didn't believe we could do something, right? We talked ourselves out of it. We let other people talk us out of it. We let fear put us on pause, right? Whatever it is, we have this whole new place where faith gets to outweigh our fear. It literally gets to, through our own expression and our own big old sunlight of the spirit, to light us up and get us into action. So this is a beautiful moon. I am incredibly powerfully passionate about this Jupiter-Neptune trine that is coming, obviously, or sextile, excuse me, that you've heard about like a hundred times in this video. But I really want us to remember that right now, we have got so much going in our world, so much changing in our structures, in our authority figures, that we have got to each own our own little pieces of passion and information and what I do in the world and why I do it. Even if I'm afraid or I'm hesitant, 
I've got to own my piece to add to the whole and to be a part of the new structures that are coming into our world. Out in a very global sense, you guys, the world is changing. We've just seen Brexit. We've seen other things, our countries. Countries are going to start to make different decisions and alignments and alliances with each other, and it will change how we interact. So we've got to find the thing that we do. We've got to find our voice, our ideals, our positions, our beliefs, our tribes, whatever it is that is our own bold, beautiful, joyful of expression so that we can add it to everything that is and is coming. So as we consider the power behind finding your voice and your magic with this big, bold, beautiful moon that is literally ruled by the sun, so it's light, heat, life, and vitality, remember and keep in your head that if you can be who you were built to be, you can do your thing, right? By doing you, you become so energetically available at every fired up level to then not only add to the whole, but to help other people become then. When the light comes on in you, it is catching to other people. And so I will tell you, being in this particular YouTube box and industry, these are things that I think about and I wanna share something with you guys as to how this has helped me grow already. Recently, I um, posted about my new office and my board that I made and the setup that I've got going on and I've been so excited but nervous to show it to you guys because the way that I do things is not perfect. I have never made a perfect circle in my life. So typically when I make a board, it's questionable, right? But I was so excited because I was me doing my thing to offer out to us so that we could learn together. And as I put it out there just so nervously and excited to start sharing it with you guys, I got some feedback from someone that said I was amateur for using drawings and very unprofessional and I needed to level up and I needed to have a complete overhauling and an upgrade. And I have to tell you, that hurt a lot to hear that and it was somebody telling me that they felt like I should be what they think I should be instead of doing what I've been doing to grow my area and to put my world out there. Here's the other part about spiritual living though and trying to grow as a human being. As I went over it with my spiritual teacher, I had to also pause and consider where what she said was correct or was a helper? Where could I consider what information had just been shared with me that could actually be useful to helping me and to helping us? And I was able to integrate a suggestion that she made about how can I can how can I take this to another level while not putting down what makes me me in our astrology world, in our YouTube world, when I work with astrology hub. I have to bring my me to this very ancient tradition and know that the people who can catch my vibe and the people who can catch my love and learn from me or just enjoy me, that's why I do it. I do it for the people who can catch me and because it's what I was built to do in my way. Suggestions, even as they come as criticism, you guys, look at where they're pointing you in the right direction and then sit and figure out what is really you? So by learning in that moment and by willing to look at that situation, I got to adjust and grow a little bit. And so I'm looking completely forward to this Leo new moon. And I hope that my example gives you something to think about in how do you still just do you also understand that there is some leveling up that is available, but if you do you, then you can put you out there and take care of the whole while also honoring yourself. Oh, it's so good. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. If you're not sure where this beautiful 20 degree full moon is happening in your particular chart. I have a video in the description box down below that talks about how to identify a transit in your chart. Identify it and then you can look pretty much anywhere. I have videos on what happens when full moons are happening in different houses for you to get even a general idea of what that's looking like for you, okay?
All right, you guys, I love you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we talk about the new moon happening in Pisces. And very quickly after that, I know it is crazy early, but the eclipse videos for um, June will be coming out as well because I want us to have plenty of time to consider and watch the patterns of how these things are playing out in our own charts, okay? I love you guys. Bye!